Hello, uh, hi everyone. So today I'm back with another lecture. The topic of today's lecture is uh, principles and practice of impression procedures. So moving on to the course objectives. The learning objectives uh, expected from you are first you should be able to define what is an impression and impression trace. You should be able to categorize the primary impression materials and trace. You should discuss the objectives of impression making and preliminary impression techniques. You should be able to summarize the principles and theories of impression making. So coming to impressions in complete dentures. A complete denture impression is a negative registration of the entire dental bearing stabilizing and water seal areas present in the edentulous mouth. That is the denture bearing area with the peripheral borders, how it looks in the mouth, it should be uh, exactly looking like a negative replica within the impression that you have just made. Coming to an impression tray, an impression tray is a receptacle into which a suitable material is placed to make an impression. An impression tray may be a stock uh, impression tray which may be edentulous or dentulous or it may be a custom made impression which is used for making the secondary or final impression. An impression tray is also a device used to carry, confine and control an impression material while making the impression. So coming to the various preliminary impression materials, uh, as you all know, you are, most of you have uh, done complete dentures or are doing complete dentures and remove partial dentures. Preliminary impression materials are impressions which are used to take first impressions or diagnostic impressions. They are broadly categorized into two uh, crude categories that is they may be reversible or irreversible based upon their chemical reaction. So in irreversible preliminary impression materials we have POP that is plaster of Paris, zinc oxide eugenol, alginate and elastomers. Zinc oxide eugenol is also known as irreversible hydrocolloid uh, because it is an irreversible material. In reversible materials, we have impression compound, uh, we have mouth temperature waxes and agar agar. All of these are thermoplastic reversible impression materials that is they react to temperature and when the temperature is raised, they liquefy and when the temperature is lowered, they again turn to solids. So moving on. The most like when uh, here we were talking about more temperature waxes, the most familiar or the most common more temperature wax are IO wax and corrector wax, which are used for either for relining or for taking uh, preliminary impressions. So uh, according to the ability of the set material to withdraw from the undercut, the second uh, classification of preliminary impression or mainly impression materials is that uh, based on their ability to be withdrawn from the undercut that is there will be elastomeric impression materials or rigid or non-elastomeric impression materials in elastic impression materials we have hydrocolloids like i just mentioned uh, uh, alginate we have uh, rubber based impression materials the first rubber based impression materials used in dentistry was polysulfide which is also known as mercaptan uh, rubber and after that we have agar agar also known as reversible hydrocolloid which is uh, extracted from seaweed or sea algae and we have uh, silicones which are broadly categorized into two types that is uh, condensation silicone which you can see an example is the zeta plus putty and the aura wash which is a light body uh, condensation silicone material and this red tube what you see is the catalyst which is used for both the putty and the light body to activate them and the other type of uh, silicone material we have addition silicone so this is again elite hd which is a putty and this is uh, what we use currently in our department so after that we have polyethers which are also a type of elastomeric impression materials uh, they are unique in that they set by a ring polymerization reaction whereas all the other elastomeric impression materials like silicones alginates polysulfide they all are uh, set by a what you call as a uh, uh, condensation or addition polymerization reaction. So in rigid we have uh, the impression compound and zinc oxide eugenol which are now being used less and less in dentistry because of the advent of newer materials like agar and uh, alginate. So moving on, uh, coming to the types of impression trays. So impression trays uh, can be broadly categorized into either stock trays which are prefabricated uh, trays and these trays may again be uh, either perforated trays 
or non perforated trays perforated uh, rim lock uh, edentulous impression trays are used along with alginate to record the diagnostic of preliminary impressions in complete dentures and non perforated trays such as these over here are used along with impression compound to take the diagnostic impressions there are also a third type of rim locked uh, water cooled impression trays which are used with along with agar agar for taking the uh, diagnostic impressions but um, uh, off and on nowadays the use of agar has decreased uh, due to the requirement of uh, expensive equipment and uh, takes a lot of time and is cumbersome so uh, next these the further diagnostic impression or preliminary impression trays now the second category is also known as custom trays or special trays these are fabricated on the models obtained from the preliminary impression that is first we take the preliminary impressions we pour the diagnostic cast or primary cast and on top of these the custom trays are fabricated either with a polymethyl with acrylic or lc or light curable resin uh, sheets so uh, coming to the objectives of impression making the objective of impression making can be summarized by this acronym that is press that is first the objective is to preservation of the remaining natural structure the second objective primary objective of an impression is to to be able to create or fabricate a process which has retention which is aesthetic which is stable and which has sufficient support from the dental bearing area now moving on to the first object is actually preservation of the remaining natural structures. Uh, Muller Divan famously said this statement in 1952 that the perpetual preservation of that which remains is of the utmost importance and not the meticulous replacement of that which has already been lost. So when a patient comes to you with uh, all his teeth missing or some teeth missing, it is our duty to preserve what is left. Like if he has residual ridges, they should be preserved in such a way that the new denture will not damage them that is uh, proper uh, accurate impressions must be made of the residual ridges so as to make complete dentures that do not further cause any problems the impression should recall the detail or in appropriate form to prevent the injury to the tissues relief as you can see here as i always tell you a double relief should be provided over the incisive papilla the mid palatal raphe and if you have extensively fibrous and prominent rugae over here so relief by using a selective uh, spacer is uh, needed uh, in the special tray or the custom tray to get accurate impressions for complete nature fabrications. You should avoid over extensions of the peripheral border areas. Uh, coming to the second objective which is the you make impressions you do not take impressions in complete dentures or remove partial dentures you make impressions with the primary objective to get a process which is retentive. So what is retention? Retention is the quality inherent in any type of processes which resists the forces of the gravity in a vertical direction such as a patient may be chewing sticky foods or chewing gums or the forces associated with the excessively wide opening of the jaws of the oral musculature. The denture should resist the displacement in a vertical direction that is in towards the gravity. So this is basically what retention is. And the factors that affect the retention are the, of course anatomic that is the size and quality of the denture bearing area the larger the denture bearing area that is in large jaws the retention is better than in the smaller arches of course physiological that is the viscosity of the saliva plays a pretty decent role in the denture retention that is a thick viscous saliva offers poor retention whereas thin serous saliva aids in the retention of the processes other physical factors such as adhesion, cohesion, surface tension that these are all taking place between the tissues, the saliva and the denture base. Adhesion is uh, between non-identical molecules that is uh, between saliva and the soft tissue and between soft tissue and between the denture and the saliva and cohesion is that is within the molecules of the saliva and surface tension, capillary and atmospheric pressure all play a significant role in retention. Others uh, things like undercuts and uh, previously springs, magnet suction cups uh, and use of adhesives uh, also aid to a certain extent in the retention of the dentures but these should not be the primary uh, things that retain the denture. The last and foremost was uh, something which was advocated as a neutral zone that is denture should lie in the zone uh, between the cheek the and the tongue and the oral musculature in such a way that uh, it is uh, it is not disturbing them or it is in a neutral position 
or it is in a balanced position between the cheeks and the tongue and uh, next uh, objective was the stability stability is the quality of the denture to be firm or steady or constant that is it that is movement of the denture in the horizontal plane that is in this plane is called as the stability the denture should be able to resist the uh, movements the pressure from the tongue as well as the cheek that is in the cheek we have the buccinator muscle the rhizorius so all these will uh, try to push the denture in a lingual or in a buccal direction so this is the ability of the denture to stay stable in the horizontal plane and next uh, the factors that affect the stability are of course the vertical height of the ridges tall rounded ridges will offer greater stability whereas short or extremely poorly uh, resolved ridges will offer no to very mild stability the quality of the soft tissue that is if you have firm tissue denture uh, bearing area you will have a good stability but if you have flabby or hyperplastic tissues in the over the crest of the ridge or in the vestibule the stability will be see very compromised of course the quality of the impression should be the brush should be accurate smooth and stable the level of the occlusal plane also to a greater extent uh, uh, plays a role in the stability if you have occlusal plane which does not uh, comply or with the theories of uh, jaw relation then it may compromise the stability of the denture and of course the labial lingual position of the teeth during teeth arrangement and the contours of the polished surface that is of the palate of the buccal and lingual flanges is also uh, uh, responsible for the stability of the so now coming to the next uh, uh, that is the support so support is the resistance of the processes in a vertical direction but towards the tissue remember retention was the uh, ability of the processes to resist dislodging forces in a vertical direction away from the tissues whereas support is the ability of the processes to be stable and retentive in a vertical direction towards the tissue that is when occlusal forces are applied when patient clenches his teeth during mastication or any such thing the processes should be able to uh, resist these forces and this is achieved by covering a large surface area the entire denture bearing area or the basal seat area should be covered sufficiently by the uh, denture flanges and the denture uh, base to be able to have a good support and this will help in uh, dissipating and uniformly distributing the forces of occlusion that is function and the function mode so the last objective uh, of the impression making uh, principle impression making is aesthetics the thickness of the flanges the height of the flanges the contour of the flanges should be such that they should support the patient's uh, oral musculature they should they should provide lip fullness they should provide cheek fullness they should uh, reduce the nasal labial fold and they should uh, what you call uh, uh prevent the commissures of the mouth from drooping downwards so all this can be accomplished even in with a good secondary impression because when you are recording an, a secondary impression or final impression you are not only recording the contours or the height of the vestibule or the vestibule extensions but you are also recording the width of the denture flanges or the denture borders during the impression making procedure so uh, coming to the principles of impression making first that is uh, uh, more like fundamentals for impression making the oral tissues must be in a healthy state they should not be hyperplastic they should not be or or stomatitis or dentist stomatitis or any candida albicans or any kind of opportunistic secondary inf uh, infection the tissues should be healthy and pink the impression should uh, include the entire basal seat area the borders of the denture of the impression because they will ultimately determine the denture flanges in the complete denture they should be in ha harmony with the peripheral tissues and the relieving structures like the buccal frenum labial frenum labial vestibule buccal vestibule the hamular notch the in the case of mandibular also the all these things plus the mesenteric notch the lingual frenum the mylohyoid ridge the retromyeloid curtain all this should be taken into account and uh, universally nowadays we use the only acceptable method of taking impressions in a custom tray is a selective pressure impression technique more about that later and uh, the there should be sufficient tissue stops uh, a space should be provided in the custom tray with proper tissue stops and proper relief given over the uh, anatomical structures in the denture bearing area 
these are different type of spacer designs that you can see over here the material that is being used to record the custom impression the final impression should be dimensionally stable that is why you we use zinc oxide eugenol or a poly uh, silicone that is polyvinyl siloxane impression material in a custom tray and the border molding is done using tracing sticks or green stick compounds uh, for the all of these things an intimate knowledge of the complete denture anatomical structures is required uh, so now coming to the classification of the impression making that is uh, impressions uh, are classified based upon the first is the different theories of impression making that is for, there are three theories of impression making that is mucostatic, mucocompressive also known as functional impression technique or functional impression theory and a selective pressure impression technique which is given by Boucher and which is largely followed all around the world. So uh, second classification of impressions is depending upon the mouth opening that is how an impression was made whether the mouth was kept open during the making of the impression and the operator was manipulating the lips and cheek or the mouth was uh, closed that is the opposing occlusal rim the opposing denture the opposing dentition was in contact with the uh, impression tray and the closed mouth impression technique was taken then depending upon the type of the impression tray of course we have stock tray or prefabricated trays and the custom tray impression and now coming to the classification of the impression that is continuing the classification and depending upon the purpose of the impression we have primary or diagnostic impressions which are taken with either with you know uh, impression compound which is a thermoplastic impression material in non perforated uh, edentulous stock trays or we can use alginate in perforated edentulous stock trays and the second type of impression is the secondary or the final impression which is taken in a custom tray and generally with a, a, a green stick tracing compound and a zinc oxide eugenol impression paste. So going on, uh, coming to the mucostatic impression, as I said mucostatic impression technique is uh, in this, it is a pressureless impression technique, no pressure is applied during the recording or making of the primary impression. Uh, the uh, advantage or the idea rationale behind it was that it led to the preservation of the tissues health because no pressure was being applied and the blood circulation was not interrupted or hindered in the uh, tissues and it can be useful in flabby tissues or sharp spiny ridges or spicules because um, uh, there is no pressure being applied so patient will not have uh, any pain or uh, soreness of the ridges but the disadvantage is that uh, this type of impression led to a loss of the peripheral seal because there were short flanges in the denture and uh, more or less these were la largely discarded and uh, for historical perspective these impression techniques uh, largely used impression plaster for impression making because in those times uh, we didn't have alginate or agarga. The next which was completely opposite was the mucocompressive impression theory which advocated that pressure should be applied during the process of impression making on the entire denture basal seat area. But of course as we know now that excessive pressure can lead to the blood circulation interruption and the resorption of the alveolar bone. Uh, it can hasten the uh, resultant resorption. Excessive pressure uh, will lead to soreness in the denture base area and, and it will result in soreness over the bony spicules and the undercuts. And uh, and because of the tissues will tend to rebound and because they were recorded under pressure, this will result in the uh, rebound or the lifting of the denture away from the tissue or the basal seat area resulting in loss of retention. So the last uh, and the most widely used technique given by Boucher was the selective pressure impression theory. So this combines the principle of both the mucocompressive and the muco uh, 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 passive impression techniques. In this technique, the idea is that we should uh, is of tissue preservation and combining it with mechanical factors of achieving retention through minimum pressure which is applied uh, within the physiological limit of tissue tolerance on the parts of the residual alveolar ridge where the pressure can be applied. So again, we as I said, we need to have a thorough understanding of the anatomy of the basal seat tissues and the surrounding uh, musculature to be able to get a good uh, selective pressure. So coming to the procedure itself, uh, if we are seeing at the operator position for taking whether it be primary or secondary impressions, uh, the operator should be standing for the maxillary impression should be standing at the 11 o'clock position that is just behind the patient on the right side. Whereas for the mandibular impression, the operator is standing in front of the patient at the 7 o'clock position. So there you go with the positions for uh, impression making and this will be the opposite for the left hand uh, chair operators. Uh, 
and coming to the selection of the trays for impression making that you take stock trays which cover the entire denture basal seat area starting from the labial frenum to the hamula notch there should be 2 mm of space between the denture borders and the vestibular uh, depth and uh, they should be the tray should be such that they should uh, provide at least 4 mm of uh, space for the impression material for recording the or making the impression because if the space is less it will result in the tear of the impression of the exposure of the tray so moving on uh, so basically all of you know this so when we are mixing alginate impressions we take a curved spatula and a rubber bowl and first the powder is dispensed and the water is dispensed after the, that in a 1 is to 1 ratio and the alginate is mixed uh, using a curved spatula in a figure of 8 motion and the mix is spread against the walls of the uh, bowl to get a good creamy uh, and uh, thick viscous uh, impression material and then the impression is recorded the patient in a open mouth impression technique and the operator performs all the border movements uh, to record the border extensions of the impression because having a, an accurate primary impression takes care of most of the work in a secondary impressions if you do not have accurate primary impressions with the proper flange extensions and the proper recording of the denture base area you will struggle during the final impression making as I see most of you struggling day in and day out. So another material used for making diagnostic of primary impressions is the impression compound. As I said, this is homoplastic impression material. We get impression compound cakes like this. These are then tempered in a hot water bath and then they are kneaded into a ball and which is then placed in the non-perforated each and stock impression trays and the impression is recorded. You have to move fast because it uh, starts uh, getting hard uh, soon upon removal from the mouth. So uh, uh, coming to the disinfection of the impression, after the diagnostic of the primary impressions or any for that matter secondary impressions are, have been made, they need to be disinfected with, uh, disinfected with a disinfectant solution such as uh, most commonly used is a 2% glutaraldehyde. You spray the impression with the glutaraldehyde and leave it in a plastic bag or a humidor for 10 minutes after which the impression can be rinsed and the models can be formed. So this brings us to the end of this today's uh, lecture. So I hope uh, I was able to impart some knowledge to you guys and that's it from me today.